Well, that is absolutely a marathon morning plenary. Uh, you all have hung in there, um, but it's been uh, really an amazing series of sessions. I want to, all to run for the doors, but not quite soon for lunch. We aren't quite at the finish line. We've had some amazing commitments for adolescent girls already, but I think we all know when it comes to adolescent girls and family planning, we are barely at the starting line. So in the next two minutes, in the time I'm very quickly going to speak to you, 54 adolescent girls in poverty will give birth. 90% of them will be child brides, and four of them will die from complications due to their pregnancy and childbirth. So what are we going to do about it? It isn't actually that complicated. There are three things that are essential that we really do. First, we need to explicitly include adolescent girls in our family planning commitments. Second, we need to count girls. We know that of the 120 million that we are trying to reach today, at least 26 million of those are adolescent girls. Now, I say at least because we don't actually know how many girls are married and how many girls are sexually active before the age of 15. So if we don't count girls, girls, girls have to count. This is essential. Third, we need to explicitly connect family planning and efforts to prevent child marriage. 90%, 90% of first births are from child marriages. It's essential that we address that issue. We have allowed girls in family planning to become a political, cultural, and religious issue. It isn't. We have allowed girls to not have our commitments be for them as well. So we need to include them in family planning before puberty and before marriage. So please don't desert girls in our efforts here today when they need us most, because they do not have the ability to do this themselves. So family planning without adolescent girls isn't really family planning. As we've heard today, it's planning for poverty. So I'd like to thank our partners at DFID and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for making girls a priority, and for many of you today who have already made that commitment to make it a priority. This is a sensitive issue, but because it's a sensitive issue, we can't shy away from it. We need to step forward and continue to deliver on these commitments. I know that the Gates Foundation and DFID are very committed to doing that, and I know many of you are here today. So now we're going to go, and we're going to have this lunch. It's sponsored together with Restless Development and the Save the Children in the UK and the International Federation for Planned Parenthood. We hope you'll enjoy it, and I hope that you will make girls a priority in your family planning efforts and all the commitments that we make here today. Thank you for your attention. Maria Eitel. Um, just, to let you, just to let you know, just before you go, um, we, you've done brilliantly. You've been s s sort of seated here for the most part. We're in the final straight after lunch. When we come back, it'll just be a short session, but there'll be a heck of a lot of heads of states up on this stage. Can I ask you to be back in your seats at 5 to 2? In the meantime, do enjoy lunch upstairs. <laughs>